الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أرسله بالحق بشير ونذير بين يدي الساعة من يفع الله ورسول فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسول فقد ضل غوى وإنه لا يضل إلا نفسه ولا يضل الله شيئا إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وإن خير الأمور عوازمها وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد العوض الله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His assistance. And to Him and only Him do we turn in repentance. We seek the forgiveness of Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our actions. And whomsoever Allah guides, none can mislead. And whoever is led astray, there is no guide for Him. We testify that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we testify that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and beloved messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to Yom al the day of Friday, the best day of the week, a time for expiation, a release of our sins that we have accumulated from one week to the next week. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from today's khutbah. And inshallah ta'ala, today we will learn about the benefits of Surah Teen. This is the 95th chapter of the Quran, the 95th Surah of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa tini wa zaytun, wa turi sinin, wa hatha al-baladi al-ameen. Laqad khalaqna al-insana fi ahsani tatweel. Thumma wadadnahu asfala safineen. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa aminu al-salihat. فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with وَالْتِينَ وَالْزَيْتُونَ Not to be confused with الطين meaning dirt or clay تين in this instance means figs and الزَيْتُونَ means olives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he takes the wow and he's taking an oath by objects it is a qasam, it is an oath. And he's saying in this, these oaths that he's, take, that he's taking, there is an absolute importance to these objects. But not only the objects, in this case, if I ask you where in the world can you get the best olives, or you can get the best fig from, and most of you would say, probably the Philistine area. And Philistine, that entire area in the Middle East, is known for the best fig and the best olives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only responding or talking about or taking an oath by the fig and the olive, but he's saying that the, the area that it represents as well. And we know that majority of the prophets والسلام, have come through Jerusalem, come through that area, Philistine. That is the area with majority of the prophets that have come through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَطُورِ سِينِينَ وَطُورِ سِينِينَ And وَطُورِ سِينِينَ is Mount Sinai. And we all know that our beloved Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam, this is the connection that Musa alayhi salam had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he was able to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the planets, on top of Mount Sinai. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the Mount Sinai. So he's swearing by the fig and the olive, and then he's swearing by the Mount Sinai. al <laughs> 
in order to understand this ayat and this city that is secure and this blessed, you have to understand where the surah was revealed. And this was revealed in Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to Mecca as being the Prophet وسلم, being from where he was born and raised as this being a blessed city. So he's taken an oath, a qasam from these three areas. From these three areas. But not only are we talking about the areas themselves, but representing the people and the prophets that have come about. And if you go back, Atin, and we already said Atin is Zaytun, Jerusalem. Who is the main prophet that we know of? Isa Jesus Christ is the main one that we know. But many of the other prophets have come through there as well. And another one that we don't know of is where Nuh Salam's ark had ended was a place, a land called Atin. So two of the prophets are the greatest prophets that we know of. Then Mount Sinai is reserved for our beloved prophet Musa Salam, Moses on top of Mount Sinai. And then Hadhal Balad I mean Mecca. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born and raised there, but we know a prophet. His ancestors that were from there, Ibrahim Salam and uh, Ismail Salam and their son and their progeny that came through. But we're talking about the Ulul Azm, the five greatest prophets, meaning the entire revelation, the entire revelation that has come about. There is no doubt about it that Islam covers everything that has come in the past, and Islam is the present, and Islam is something that will go into the future. We cover every religion. All of the people today are trying to celebrate whatever they're trying to celebrate, their holidays, Easter, Passover, and we supersede all of those holidays because these are not from the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictates to us that we are the people that have the correct message, that have the right message about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, about Musa alayhi salam, about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And not these people were not Christians, and these people were not Jews. They were believers. They were believers. And they believed in the right path. And they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they took the right message and they brought it forth to the people. And this is what we believe that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought to us. And if we were to give da'wah today, and if we were to invite people to Islam today, this is what we tell them that we have covered everyone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not said anything that has contradicted any of the other people, any of the other prophets. Not one contradiction whatsoever. The only thing that has changed is some of the things that have been introduced from the Arab culture that have assimilated into the religion. For example, the thobe is not something that they wore in other parts of the world, but something similar. So the different cultural aspects have come about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the qasam of four objects. And then where does he go? There he starts with the qasam of four things, four objects and lands. And you know that there's something coming about after when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Naqad, there's an emphasis. Something great is happening. He's got you interested. I see all of you looking at me right now. Okay, so what does all this have to do with this surah? We understand that all these prophets are interrelated. But how does this come and put everything together? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the insan, the humankind, the mankind, the beings that we have put on this planet are the best of forms. And if you look at it, and if you think about it, we have the best forms and bodies. If you look at us compared to the animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the perfect balance in our legs, perfect balance in our backs, perfect arms to be able to raise and do things. The head being able to turn different ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with our body. Then what did he, did he, what did he also bless us with? A mind, aqad, intellect. This is something that the animals have very little of. You can train them. You can train them to do things, but they cannot think for themselves. They cannot do one of the, the things on their own. They can only be trained. And if you think about the jinn, the jinn are ones that are missing the jasad, they're missing the body. If you're looking at the angels, the angels are something that have an incomplete body. It's an incomplete structure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the uh, intellect away from them that they, okay, they can only do good. The will has been taken out. And then the soul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put, uh, put in us. We always continuously feed our bodies. And we continuously feed our intellect. And we do not feed our soul. And the soul is the connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the thing that will be good for you or bad for you. If it's good for you, then inshallah the ending will be good for you. If it's bad for you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all of the, all of the worlds in the akhirahs, all of its torments. Allahumma ameen. Ikhwan Islam, so mankind has been raised to a status that there's none other like this mankind. None other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this dignity. But then what happened? It's like almost melodramatic. 
that I've lifted you and made you the best. That you have reduced, that you have been reduced to the lowest of the lows, not just the low, the lowest of the lows. If there's something low, you're lower than that. You're lower than that. You have transgressed, you have receded, you have gone backwards in time. We had lifted you, we had given you everything that you needed, everything that you need to survive in this earth, everything that you need to survive in the next life. Yet you have reversed your attitude. You have reversed your understanding. You have reversed your habits. Why? Does this apply to everyone? Does this apply to everyone? It only applies to those people. It does not apply to those people who have Iman and who follow it with action. So we have another story here. There are some people that say that I have Iman in my heart, Yafi. I have it here. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in the Messenger of, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it's followed by no action whatsoever. And that's something that is outside of our religion. And then there's other people that Allah is good, God is good. That as long as I, you know, I do good, good activity, good things, I give donations, I take care of the people, I open the door, I drive in the right lane, I don't cut people off when I drive, I don't say bad words. But you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is outside the fold of Islam. So character alone is not good enough. And just saying that you have a belief in your heart is not good enough. You must follow that up with the actions. You must pray. You must establish the prayer. That is one of the first things when you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are not backing that belief up with the prayer, then your belief is lacking. Your iman is lacking. There is a lack of iman. If I were to tell you that I believe that this stock is going to make money, and if I have the money, and if I don't put the money into that stock, do I really believe it? You can believe all you want, you're not going to make anything out of it. That same concept applies to our religion. It applies to us to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the most authentic manner. And if you aren't able to do that, your religion is not complete. It's incomplete. And then, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ When you start to do those things, the rewards come in. They come in immediately. They start immediately. With no end. Conceptually, perpetually, continuously. There is no end to that reward. So if you, today, tell yourself that, you know what, I've done major, major things wrong. I've done things that I shouldn't have done. As long as you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and follow Him and His command, and follow the sunnah of Abu Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then there is hope for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبِ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, my servant, don't despair. Don't despair if you have sins that go across the oceans across the oceans, as many sins that you can bring with you, still don't despair. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come back in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving. He is so generous. Come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuously do good deeds. Giving the charity. And not giving your, we have to do only. Voluntarily. So a lot of times people come to us, hey, can I give my zakat for donation? Of course you can give your zakat for certain things. But that is something that is a must, an obligation upon you. Will you not take something voluntarily and give it up as well? Will you not voluntarily go and get more education? Will you not voluntarily do something for someone else? Will you not voluntarily share your food that MashaAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with? Will you not voluntarily share your resources that you have that can benefit? If you have a job, if you have placements in your offices, if you have internships that you can provide, why not offer it to our brothers and sisters? If there's monies that you have and the brethren that allow them to incur all this debt and student loans and stuff, why don't we create something for them so they can use, so they don't have to go into debt, so they don't have to go continuously into interest and ask what is my, what is my solution without loans, I can't educate myself. These are things that we consistently and constantly think for ourselves and for our children and that's it, close the universe. And this is not, this is not the religion of Islam. The religion of Islam, if anything, teaches you anything, it's to be selfless. 
It's to be someone for others. When Islam comes up, our motto should be men, brothers and sisters for others. That should be our motto. That means should be something that we should be doing. Continuously and constantly. Much I see a lot of brothers doing and a lot of sisters doing a lot of things. But we need to go and get involved. Just a few of us are doing things. Few of our brothers and sisters are doing good things. <laughs> but everyone needs to get involved. Everyone needs to get involved. Allah Islam. You guys know better than I do. Our, either we came to this country or we were born in this country. Or our, someone in our ancestry came into this country. And we've adopted some of the culture of this country. But what have we done really for this country? If you think about Muslim Americans, what have they done? What have they continuously done? I'm telling you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Don't only believe, but you got to follow up with righteous actions. What righteous actions have we continuously performed? Continuously performed, setting up shelters. I don't know if anyone's in shelters. Soup kitchens, we take all our donations and we give to churches. We don't do anything that we need to do to back up our own religion. And then when you see all of these messages taking place in the media that are negative in nature, it's because of our own doing. Because we're not backing it up. All we've done in this country at this moment in time is taking somebody else's job. They're upset at us. They're upset with all of us. We have taken a job because, there are a few reasons, because we're educated. We don't drink. We don't smoke. We don't, do all, we don't waste a lot of our money and a lot of our time and energy and things that we're not supposed to be wasting it in. But all we've done is taken someone else's job. Can you imagine if you were here before and you were doing the job and your parents, their parents had the job and they were expecting the job, but then somebody else, they allowed to come into the country through the immigration process, they take the jobs away? They'd be upset. And that's what they feel right now. If you have that job, you need to share the resources. Because when Rasulullah left Mecca and went into Medina, just think about it. Just think about it. That connection, when that connection took place, Mecca into Medina, the inhabitants, the Muhajirun, they have emigrated and they've gone to a country where it's inhabited by the Ansar. The Prophet integrated that relationship. They shared their resources with each other. They shared their resources with each other. One person was paired, one Muhajir, one immigrant was prepared with another national, with a citizen. The terminologies are different. It's the same concept. It's the same concepts over and over again. We are failing to understand. When we say witness, attorney can be a witness. There is concepts that have always been there. Just our terminologies have changed over the year. The immigrant was paired with the Ansar. The Ansar and everything, they shared their resources. And they lived. And they lived happily and they shared and they grew. That's how you develop a community. That's how you share. That's how you become part of the community. Not isolated in your own area. Not isolated in your own home. Not trying to isolate yourself in a masjid and try to hide and pray. To do it openly. Because we're not hiding anything. If it is the truth, and if we have everything that the people should know about, Isa alayhi salatu wassalam, and Musa alayhi salam, and everything that those people did, then we need to share what we have. Because if we don't, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينِ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ And isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of the judges? Think about it. The king of kings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment. Today, we have nation states, and we have presidents, and we have prime ministers, and we have kingships. These are individuals that are going to consistently judge in unfavorable. They're going to judge in a manner where it's not proper for the people to be judged in that manner. But these are the people that are going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are people that are going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of kings, and he will judge them all the way throughout. And on that day, there is no getting away. There is no way out. On that day, everything is going to represent on that day from the time you were born to the time you were dead, to the time you die. And you were buried. That life period is what dictates the next life. If that period of life that you're living, if it's not in accordance with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what have we done? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we reduced our levels or we act like animals. And then he says, no, we have become worse than animals. When he's talking about getting away from the deen or the people who are not inside the religion. Why? Because they're only thinking about this world. Because they're not thinking of that next world. 
And that connection is something very difficult to make in today's time. And if you think about it, there's two different schools of thought, two different classes. One class says religion, spirituality. The other one says science and everything that I can see. And then when we separate these two, when you're religious, you do not bring any types of immoralities, any type of bad behavior inside the message you pray. But when I walk outside that door, everything is legal. I can go and commit immoralities. I can go and commit all of these atrocities. But remember who you're going to report back to. Remember who you're going to be raised in front of. Remember who you're going to be judged in front of. Who is going to judge you? Your own actions are going to lead to that final judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in our hearts, knows what is in our minds, and knows what we do with our body parts, with our limbs. He knows exactly what we're doing at every single moment of day, at every single moment of night. There is no way, no way whatsoever to get away from that accurate judgment. And it's one of the things that we need to do. It's always consistently and constantly try to make ourselves better. If there is something that you've established, and people come to me all the time, and ask me, okay, I believe in Allah, and I'm praying, what can I do more? Add some sunnah to your prayers. I fast the month of Ramadan. Try to fast outside the month of Ramadan as well. I give the zakat. Try to give a little bit more than what you give in the zakat. Fine, that's your obligation. Why not give something from your heart? Why not give something from your heart? Haven't you ever gone by somewhere where somebody's just giving out these things? Only two types of people. Only two types of people that we're able to get that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Rasulullah said that we can get jealous from. And one of those people is the one who collects the wealth, who makes that wealth and distributes it on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other one is the person who collects this knowledge and distributes the knowledge, teaches the people, teaches your own family. If you even teach your own family, that's enough. At least teach them. Because I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today, I read, one of the brothers said that they read a statistics today by 2070 or whatever that the Muslims are going to outnumber the Christians. Okay, but what type of Muslim is going to outnumber the Christian? The one that worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that follows that up with the righteous actions? Or the ones that become bland and they do very little? And they just want to be known as culturalistic Muslim and not practicing Muslims. That has been the entire, entire thing that has been coming on from the Western world against the Muslims. It's the ones that are practicing their religion. They continuously spread this religion and people are accepting Islam in droves. That is depressing them. That is making it difficult for them. We don't want to make it easy. It's our religion. It's not just our religion. It's their religion. They just refuse to accept it. Give it to them. And make that allow them to understand. Give it to them in a way, in a manner where they can understand it. When you present Islam as something that is strange because you have to go hide in a closet, because you can't pray in front of everybody, then what is the message that you're sending? That message is unclear. Then you must have something to hide. You must be doing something wrong. Why are you hiding it? You cannot hide it. If you continuously hide it, you're going to be continuously looked at a person as something, you're hiding something, and you're a threat. And you can't be a threat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand our religion, and allow us to implement our religion in our lives, and to be the proper man in accordance with the Sunnah of Abu Lakh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created mankind in the best of forms. We have three main faculties, and I've described them very generally right now. Of them being the mind, the soul, in the body. And if we start with just the body and the jasad, there are groups of people that think that the body is something that should not be punished and that should be given up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, these are incorrect understanding in accordance with our 
authentic sources of Islam. When you see that you spend your entire life in a monastery or in a masjid and you don't put your body to any pain and all you do is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there's others, they're a masochist and they say, no, no, no. You take your body and you put it forth and it should feel the trouble. And you even probably remember the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the person said that when I'm fasting that I want to stand inside, outside in the sun and continue to work and put myself through the harsh treatment. And the Prophet ﷺ restricted that person from doing such. And these two extremes, these are things that we want to stay away from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us we are the ummah of Allah. We are the ummah that takes the middle path. We take the conserved, we don't take the conservative and we don't take the aggressive uh, position. We take the moderate position, somewhere in the middle. And the same thing with the soul. And people have these extreme examples of the soul. That the soul can do this and the soul can do that and you rely on the soul or well, the soul is going to be good this way or well, the soul is going to be bad this way and you continuously work on the soul and you become, you know, the spiritualists. Absolutely, completely immersed with spirituality. And the other one says, oh, you don't have to worry about the spirit, the spirit whatsoever. The soul doesn't exist or nothing's going to happen to you. And again, Ummah the Muslim. The Muslim, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah says, no, we are in the middle that our soul does experience pain and that we do have to work on the soul and we do have to feed the soul by the consistent and constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with the message of our beloved Prophet Muhammad and finally the intellects the people that the intellectuals and we face this today more than anybody else right these are the people that say that everything if, if, if it makes sense to me I follow it if it doesn't make sense to me I don't follow it and subhanAllah that is not the way we do we have authentic sources, and that's something that none of the religions have. And this is confirmed in the Quran that every one of them has changed their religion, has changed the books that were sent to them, has changed the revelation that was sent upon them. Our religion has been conserved, has been preserved from the day of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quran was written down; it was transmitted orally and written down from that point all the way throughout till today. Wallahi you'll love this. There today, who follow the Quran in certain parts of the world where I'm not liberty at saying where, but there's certain parts of the world where the Hufaz al Quran they can tell you what their teacher was and who their teacher was and who their teacher was and who their teacher was going back all the way through. And then you know what they hit? They hit the Sahaba Quran as one of Allah's And then they hit and they go back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they go to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam Archangel Gabriel. And go to the low and mahfuz where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded everything. SubhanAllah. In only 50 or so generations. No one has this. No one has this connection between our people, the people who memorize the Quran. They have the certification from their teacher and their teacher. And that certification dates back to the low and mahfuz. No one. If you have any doubts in your mind of the authenticity of the Quran, there is no doubt. Not Forget one word. One letter, one sound hasn't been changed. This is exactly, this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there's any doubts in your mind, Ikhwan Islam, Ikhwan Islam, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take those doubts out of your mind. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take any, any type of, even the little single ounce of a doubt outside of our mind. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء من الأموات اللهم إنك عفو من بحيل عفو فعفو عنا اللهم اغفر بحلالك عن حرامك وامن بفضلك من سلامك اللهم أرنا الحق حق ومرتقنا الدباع وأرنا الباطل باطل ومرتقنا الاستلامة اللهم أيد الإسلام اللهم ثبتنا على الإسلام اللهم نبر قلوبنا بنور الإسلام اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي عذاب النار اللهم ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رف الرحيم اللهم لا تجعلنا من القوم الظالمين اللهم لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة